Hello everyone. Hope you're having a good weekend. Uh, today is another uh, video on how to plan and uh, we are going to uh, look at this uh, tremendous game uh, by uh, Grandmaster uh, Kozel who was 2580 at the time versus Lars Bo Hansen with the black pieces 2525 at the time in 1991 when this game uh, took place. Okay, this game started off D4 from Kozel e6 c4 and then f5 so now we have a dutch defense and uh, again for you newer players out there e6 is a great way uh to avoid gambits in the dutch defense so if you want to play the dutch and you don't mind transposing to e4 a e4 game for instance the french defense after e4 of course d5 then e6 is a good way uh, when co uh, confronting d4 to slip into the Dutch. Uh, for example, after f5, there are a lot of anti-Dutch systems that you will have to prepare for that uh, can be quite dangerous. You know, for instance, g4, e4, start and gambit. There's all kind of systems with, with uh, h3, uh, followed by g4. And again, uh, they, those take some additional preparation. So many players will just avoid all of that by playing e6 first, and then... Usually a D4 player who's dedicated uh, will just simply go into um, Queen's Gambit and play a C4. And then you can just go into your Dutch without, um, you know, any um, big controversy on how to deal with the with the Gambit here. Of course, this limits some options. Uh, for instance, you're not going to have your traditional Leningrad if you're a Leningrad Dutch player. You can still play it, but again, now you have the point on E6, etc. So moving on, g3. So Kozul is playing his traditional uh, setup against the Dutch defense. Bishop g2, c6, knight f3. And here, black still has the opportunity to play move like d6, a classical uh, Dutch here. But after knight f3, he decides to play d5. Notice, too, the subtlety uh, with the moved order because a lot of times, if White plays knight c3 too early. Bishop b4 would be played almost immediately. I mean, Alakine spoke about this a long time ago. And he felt that in the classical Dutch that the dark square bishop for black was really not that useful. And often opted to trade it off immediately if white played uh, knight c3. Just play bishop b4 and then uh, chop it off uh, really quick. So this is why you see the delay of development with this knight. It forces black to make other moves. So d5, castles, and now again you see that uh, any kind of pin now will be uh, would be void because of the castling situation. So now bishop comes out to d6. Now we have our uh, stone wall here. Knight bd2, and now of course, one of the most popular ideas, and here we're going to get into our analysis, already analyzed, uh, analyzed um, already made an analysis of the position at this point. But let me just say that uh, one of the most popular ideas is to exchange off uh, the bishops here, all right? And this can be done in at least three different ways. One is, of course, playing b3 with the idea of playing bishop to a3. Right, bishop from c1 to a3. This is also popular. Uh, bishop c1, f4. You can see the game of uh, Karpov or uh, Tupolov, I believe in 1994, was it? Uh, several games like this where it looks bad at first because uh, white is compromising his pawn structure, but then white sort of gets a stonewall position of his own. It's very powerful. They can often attack up the g file. And then the other way is. Uh, off to bishop g5 and winds up uh, trading uh, at some point after this knight moves and if this bishop's on e7. So that's one of the um, common uh, ways. Another way um, that I saw was uh, in the game uh, Kasparov Short. And I'm sorry, I don't remember what year that was right offhand, but um, Short was playing the Stonewall uh, defense and Kasparov played. Um, he had his pawn on a4 and b3, and he kind of did the same setup, except he had his queen uh, backing up the bishop 
uh, so as to go right into the end game after bishop takes bishop takes um, and trade off both the dark square bishop and the queens because sometimes black in order to uh, keep uh, white from playing his bishop to a3 he'll play queen e7 and if you notice that in this in this particular setup let me just show you instead of messing around um, so let's say for example now queen e7 so now this plan you know can't be uh, implemented right away so Kasparov had played this move and now he has the rook backing up the bishop and let's just say for example castle because I don't remember the game by heart but I remember this position and now you can trade off here okay and then sometimes say after moves like that this is all possible here and white will be happy to go into this uh, ending although black has resources all right so back to the position castle bishop d6 um, knight bd2 was played instead of the idea would b3 and um, Oh, one more thing I want to mention also is that with this idea, um, oftentimes this knight, I don't want to get into a big theoretical discussion here, but oft oftentimes this knight will um, travel and it will end up on d3. This is an old idea uh, that you see in the early days of the Stonewall. So for, so for example, after, let's say, um, let's just make up some moves, castles here 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 queen attacks here and you'll see this um you'll see this idea of this knight making this journey to e1 and then to knight d3 with the idea of reinforcing the um the uh grip on e5 so that's one of the main ideas also. But there's many different uh, ideas. I don't want to get into a whole bunch of ideas on the Stonewall. But there's all types of ways to deal with this. But again, once I present the analysis to you of the position, then you'll understand uh, you know, all the different strategical um, routes that you can take. So here, Knight BD7, it's white to move. Okay. So again, using my seven-step analysis, okay, king safety is good, right? There's no attack on the king, so that's equal for both sides. Are there any direct threats? No, there is not. Materials, material equal? Yes, it is. Nobody has given up a pawn or a piece down or anything like that. Open files? Not really. This is a closed position. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the only file that's relatively close to being semi-open is the C file, so we keep that in mind, all right? Now we get into the more um, strategic elements, pawn structure, okay? <clears throat> this is a two-step uh, process. Uh, step number five, pawn structure, is pretty uh, is equal on both sides. Nobody has uh, damaged pawn structure or isolated pawns, backward pawns, or uh, anything of that nature. Hanging pawns, all right? The pawn structure is, is equal for both sides. Now the second part of that is we get into strong and weak squares and that's when we get into the hole on E5, etc. like that. And again, we're looking from White's perspective here. And so all you would do is um, take the uh, analysis and uh, just flip it and whatever strong for White is going to be weak for Black, okay? So now we're looking at the strong squares for White in this um, situation what are the strong squares for white these are squares that uh, white possesses in the enemy territory that black himself uh, cannot use right that he would he, he would like to use on his own property but he can't because white is attacking them so for example strong squares for white are, are uh, e5 because a bishop can cannot occupy that square at this moment neither uh, can this knight and remember, it's white to move here. So if black, if black could move, right, the possibility that it could play this, but it's it's white, white's move. All right. Um, what else? G5, right? That's in black's territory. Now, of course, he's not thinking about making that move, but 
you want to make mental notes that hey this square is under your control so g5 e5 also c5 same situation black cannot occupy uh, that square and then this um, square b5 is just under um, it's being contested by both sides so neither one can use it but this is actually good for white because again this is in black's territory okay so black cannot use a square in its own territory all right and then just flipping it over looking at the other side strong squares for white excuse me strong squares for black that would be weak for white e4 right this is one of the the main um uh ideas in the stone wall is taking over this square and using it as a jump off for a king side attack all right so e4 is very strong g4 right can white cannot use that in this territory <clears throat> and also uh, b4 so same thing right moving on to step six again a two-part process we look at the center who has control of the center that's a that's a um a wash there as uh in these four central squares both players have have an equal uh, stake in the center although black is reinforcing e4 rather heavily as far as uh the the control of the center is pretty much the same from there we go and look at space okay black has more space on the king side Okay, due, due to this pawn uh, being on the fifth rank here. All right. And uh, notice that's usually uh, where black tends to attack is on the on the king side of the board, where he's stronger, where he has more space. So it all flows logically, all right, from the analysis. And <clears throat> conversely, on the other side of the board, we see that black, excuse me, that white has more space on the queen side due to his pawn being on c4. And again, we see most of the attacks from white uh, uh, taking place on the black queen side of the board. Step seven, again, the two part process, we look at development. Okay, white has a, a lead in development, all right? Not too big of a deal, again, being in the closed position, but again, you wanna have these things in mind. And then last we look at piece location, uh, the pieces are, uh, you know, well placed for uh, both uh, uh, sides here. So there's not really a big advantage in that situation. So, I mean, looking at this position, uh, I would give white, you know, a slight advantage because that's the first thing we want to look at is uh, if we're better, worse or equal. I would give white the slightest of advantages. Uh, in this position um black black has his um advantages in the position so does white but i like white's position just just a tad uh better uh, here okay so now that we have analyzed the position well what kind of plans can we um uh leave with or go forward with okay so one is we notice that um again oh I almost forgot to mention in our last step with the peace location, we had noticed we had this bishop trapped behind these light squares. Okay. So that's definitely something that we want to, uh, you know, keep in mind. This bishop being behind all of these, these pawns. All right. And notice that this bishop is a good bishop. Okay. So one of the first things um, in as we go forward planning, one idea is to trade off these bishops here this is where that idea comes from because obviously this is black's best uh, probably best piece right now in the position is this dark squared bishop so this is definitely a good strategy and that's where you get this idea of b3 bishop a3 etc or sometimes this bishop f4 so that's a good um good strategical idea right it falls in line with the analysis of the position is trading off uh the dark square bishop all right. <clears throat> Another thing is attacking where we are strong. So that's the occupation of the uh, e5 and c5. And also a general um, advance on the queen side. 
okay remember we already have a space advantage over here so if we can continue to advance on the queen side and take more space uh, from black over here that would be good also resulting in the restriction of the pieces okay at the same time we want to try to keep this bishop this bishop bad all right as long as possible if uh, if possible go right into an end game with that bishop being bad Another idea is to um, now moving over to addressing our weaknesses because usually there's two, you know, two ways you can go. You can address, you can play where you're strong at, or you can address your weaknesses in the position, right? The other, so the other idea is to address where we're weak at. Remember, we talked about e4 being weak. Okay, um, so that opens us up to this next uh, plan, which is. The idea of playing e4 at some point breaking breaking down black's strong point in the position that's where you get ideas like f3 and e4 and so forth so moves like rook e1 come into place and when you have these ideas of knight coming in f3 and e4 what did these do these these deal with um addressing black strongholds in your position okay so now that we have all of that uh, on the table Right, some candidate moves as possible. We have um, plenty of ideas here. Uh, moves, for instance, like Queen C2, right? Putting more pressure on E4. You know, with ideas of uh, Rook E1. We have ideas of Rook B1. Again, playing B4. Um, attacking on the Queen side. Again, moves like F3 uh, come to mind. All right, so there's plenty, plenty of. Uh, uh, room for uh, creativity you know just coming from this position depending on uh, what you want to do but no matter what you choose to do make sure that the um, move fits in with the general analysis so for instance if you play b3 you know that okay I want to trade off the dark square bishop or if you play you know uh, rook e1 etc queen c2 and then try to occupy e5 you know okay i want to play f3 and e4 right have have some type of concrete reasoning uh behind behind the move and this is what's good about the analysis if you play the move b4 or rook b1 b4 right know that you're okay you're going to continue attack on the queen side okay maybe play b4 b5 exchange off on uh the uh c6 square and possibly attack up the now open c file etc everything must tie together all right so let's continue now that we've done this analysis and see what the players uh, did here so queen c2 castle was played and now knight b3 now this is really um an unusual move in this position okay black the the problem is is that white is white has the correct idea in attacking right this um c5 square his idea is basically he wants to utilize the c file there's nothing wrong with that we talked about that in the analysis right the possibility of the c file coming open however tactics is king we have to make sure that tactically it's going to work out but his idea is basically to take over this c file and namely possess this uh c5 square uh from black all right problem here is that if we we looked at black side remember we said this bishop was bad of course black doesn't want this bishop to be bad so what is a move that black would normally do to um make this bishop better well one of the things he does is this old time botvinnik maneuver where he plays bishop d7 bishop e8 and then the bishop comes out here right of course it's slow but that's the maneuver that he does the other maneuver that's easier to do but creates some weakness on the queen side is he plays b6 and then slips this bishop out to a6 or bishop uh or to b7 a6 puts him on a, a open diagonal so this idea of occupying c5 might get crossed up by a simple move like b6 and this solves two problems for black it mitigates the weakness on c5 and frees the bishop let's see how the game went 94 again falling in with the analysis black is just simply playing where he's strong at 91 okay 
queen e7. Knight d3. Remember this idea? So he's, he's decided to play against the c5 square. b6, stopping the occupation there. Bishop e3. Bishop a6 with tempo. All right. C5. Bishop b8. Notice that black doesn't uh, capture here. He doesn't want to give up that square. So c takes b6. A takes b6. Notice that white can't really do anything now. So this is what he's based his his um his idea on. The fact that yes, white is like, hey, I can't occupy this square, but look, I have this weak pawn this weak pawn here to attack. Right? The other alternative course with bishop c7 and then white could have played move like f3 again right all fits in the analysis because either either you're doing two things either you're attacking where you're strong or you're um strengthening the areas where you're weak at right and attacking your and, and uh, driving your opponents your opponent away Okay, you should be doing one of those two things, right? If you have an advantage somewhere on the board, attack that. And if, if that gets slowed down, for example, then improve your position, right? And oftentimes improving your position is, um, you know, breaking down your opponent's uh, strong points. Back to the game, c5, bishop, b8, c takes, c, uh, a takes, queen takes, c6. So white has won the pawn here, right? That's fantastic. However... Lars Bohansen strikes with the bolt of lightning. Bishop takes g3. Remember, I said tactics is king. So White had this beautiful plan, right, which which worked out tremendously. You end up winning the pawn on the queen side. He has a two to one pawn majority. The problem is, after Bishop takes g3, he cannot capture the bishop because his queen would be trapped. Okay, h takes g3 is meant by rook fc8. So, obviously, this is a move that he overlooked early on, okay? So, he saw this whole scenario here and with the possibility of either occupying the C5 square. Again, it's great, great plan. And he said, well, if I can't get that uh, square, I'll have this weak pawn on this open C file. Notice how Black's move, Bishop takes g3, coincides with his advantages on the king side, having more space. So it's only fitting that he plays a move like that, right? Bishop takes g3. So, queen c2. Again, he cannot capture. Bishop just came back. Now, now Black has gained a move, gained some time because the queen just has to get out of dodge. Bishop d6, f4, okay, so we see now here white trying to hold back, uh, hold black back on the king side, rook a c8, the only open file, and um, black just takes it over, queen d1, queen h4, again, Playing where he's strong at, playing where his advantage is at, on the king side. Now the difference here is that White's plan has been totally uh, frustrated, right? This idea that he was going to attack on the queen side, and Black's plan uh, is definitely working out for him. So he has this attack brewing on the queen side, on the king side rather. The things that we said were bad about black, right, have been improved. The bishop is on a nice open diagonal, probably the best diagonal on the board, an a6. 
his rook is occupying the open file his knight is on e4 and his queen is on h4 all right so he has most of the pluses in this position and now black uh, is better as a result of that uh, faulty plan notice how these knights uh, sort of misplaced this knight here on d3 is okay because at least he can jump into e5 this knight is is really in a bad uh, position because he can't realize his goal of you know getting to c5 white plays knight e5 knight d f6 and knight d2 and this is a, of course when the stone wall is going right for for black knight g4 again remember we talked about this square earlier notice how he's able to use it now knight g4 knight takes g4 queen takes g4 just utilizing that square notice now the bishop very powerful this once bad bishop so rook f3 is played rook to c7 king h1 rook fc8 so now we see black taking over on quote-unquote white side of the board bishop f1 rook c2 penetrating the position knight takes e4 d takes e4 hitting the rook rook f2 bishop b7 now a5 happens bishop d5 and we can just see black just crushing here b takes rook takes rook takes b2 more material queen a4 bishop f8 and the rest is just uh pretty much like a, a cleanup job here white desperately trying to create some counterplay but to no avail i'll just run through the rest of the moves real quick rook b3 of course rook b a uh, rook b1 is is good who knows these players might have been in time trouble Gives up the exchange. And black just went on to uh, win this game. Like I said, I'll just speed through the remainder of these moves. Since it's outside the scope of this video. And of course, uh, being up material. You know, especially at grandmaster level. Like that is like no brainer. So you can see black ended up with this extra pawn on the outside. And um, uh, Kozo had to resign as the h pawn is going to uh, save the day uh, so i hope you learned uh, from that um and again another uh you know another example of planning and i guess what i'm trying to get across to you is that uh, an analyzing chess is very important especially in positions where again there's no direct tactical uh solution in the position okay um that i find that is a problem with many chess players is that they don't know how to analyze a position when there's like nothing you know I always call it quote unquote when there's nothing to do in a position right when there's nothing direct like how do you decide on you know the plans and what a lot of players do is they'll they're trying to look for tactics at every, at every move and usually that's a problem for players that um, they waste a lot of time. They get in a, a time trouble a lot because they're looking for a tactic on every single move. They're digging and digging for tactics and that takes a lot of time, right? They're usually very good tact tactical players. If there's a tactic there, they find it. But they're looking for that on every move. So they, you know, take 10, 12 minutes you know per move and then they end up in time trouble and maybe they have an advantage at some point but then they lose it in time trouble um now if you if you uh, become good at uh, analyzing and uh, analyzing a position then you'll be able to make three or four moves quickly because everything goes with the plan like you made your plan and nothing's really changing from move to move uh that much unless of course the opponent makes an egregious error 
So you're able to be like, okay, for instance, you know, in the stone wall, like, okay, I'm gonna play, uh, I'm gonna play b3, bishop a3, um, you know, bishop takes knight, knight takes, and I bring my knight to e1, d3, and we're gonna play against the e5 square, right? Or I'm gonna play queen c2, rook e1, knight e5, f3, e4, right? You ha you have this, uh, you know, at least three, four moves ready to go because you already have a general plan. Or you're saying, okay, I'm gonna play rook b1, then I'm gonna play b4, b5, b takes c6, and I'm gonna attack on the this weak pawn on the uh. You know that results on the C file, etc. Right? You have you know plans allow you to be able to you know play three four moves quickly without going into you know this deep thought. But it's important to to analyze, and that way you can always double check because if you're playing a move that doesn't fit in with the analysis, then it's probably wrong, right? So, for instance, if you play, you know, just say, okay, I'm playing a move like h4 here or something like that. You know, it's probably wrong. There's no reason uh, to do a move like that, right? Now, conversely, we talked about this square earlier, which white wound up using. Now, this move h3, a move like h3 actually fits in with with uh, mitigating uh, this weakness here. Now, is it the best move in the position? No, because there's more important things for you to do in the position, right? For instance, you got to, you know, deal with this <laughs> this pawn that's hanging here. But say, for instance, everything else was uh, taken care of. So let's just say B3, right? Let's have, let's have a little fun here and then uh, I'll end this video because I don't want to go too long on a tangent here. But let's say you have B3 here, castle. Again, there's more important things you can do here because you got pieces that's not that haven't been developed. Stuff so you can play again, Bishop H3. But again, move like H3 here isn't isn't a hard isn't a horrible move, right? You're addressing a minor point in the position, okay? But at least you're addressing one of the the weaknesses in the position, okay? Like this wouldn't be a lose a losing move. The point that I'm trying to make is that is always have some type of reasoning behind the move you know a good you know you know and that's where the plan comes in and once you understand your um planning and the analysis then you can you'll understand why grandmasters play you know will play a move like a4 you know like i showed you in that casper you know kasparov variation a4 makes sense okay he's trying to trade this off etc etc and then, but again, the moves always tie together into a, a bigger plan. So anyway, like I said, that's it for this video uh, for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Leave the comments down below. Like, subscribe uh, to my channel. Support my channel, please, by clicking on the donation button. And also check the links below that for uh, DVDs uh, and or books related to the opening uh, that we discussed today, which happens to be the Stonewall defense. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you guys soon on the next video.